father started in on a 25 minute rant and called an Filipino. That's very painful. Horrible thing. Welcome back to our channel, Fly Me to the Philippines. And today, Chrissy, sometimes it might take three Filipinos. What do you mean three Filipinas? Well, I mean, sometimes if you're a Western man mm -hmm. and you're online or you're here in the Philippines, you don't always meet your bingo when you think you meet your bingo. It might actually take more than one try. You would be lucky if you will hit the bingo in the one try. Well, I think a lot of men feel like they've met that special person and they travel to meet uh, they're mm -hmm. Filipina. And, you know, like in all relationships, things don't always uh, work out. It takes uh, some time getting to know the other person. Uh, we've um, lived together uh, mm -hmm. for 10 months and uh, we're working together on YouTube and we've gotten to know each other. And just in the last video, we announced that we'll be married in six months. Hopefully. Hopefully. And, Hopefully you uh, won't change your mind. We calculated that if you had the type of job where you work five days a week and you had a commute, a commute uh, it would be the equivalent of knowing each other for like uh, three or four years. Yeah. Because we're around each other all the time. 24-7. And the idea is that, you know, a person can only uh, pretend uh, for so long, maybe two or three months, you can keep mm -hmm. up the facade, your, you know, real personality. Uh, yeah. You know, if you've got uh, 10 pounds of personality and you're trying to keep it in a five pound wrapper, you can only do it for so long. Yeah. And so a lot of men have come to meet their Filipina and it just doesn't work out. You know, it's, they haven't met in person. You think it's perfect, but then you have to find out if you have chemistry and uh, you, you determine whether the person is exactly right for you, whether you can make that commitment mm -hmm. today. We want to share with you uh, from uh, some of our viewers' comments. We have so many fantastic uh, subscribers, and we get thousands of comments every month. There's so many interesting stories we could go on and on. But today we want to share with you um, one viewer in particular. He shared two stories with us, and both are really worth sharing with you. Uh, the first a story he wrote in response to a video we did uh, mm -hmm. called A Father's Dilemma, where I talk about my challenge of uh, letting my children know that I'd be kind of leaving the United States and moving to be with Chrissy in the Philippines. They felt a little bit abandoned. And he wrote in to respond to that comment. And let me share that with you and everybody here. He writes, when I told my teenage and adult children that I was interested in likely meeting and marrying a Filipina, they were extremely negative. One of my best friends was out visiting me in California, he writes, and he was extremely negative as well. Mm -hmm. So Chrissy, uh, the initial reaction from his children and his friends were extremely negative, and he's sharing that he had to deal with that. Yeah, um, you know, I really understand that because I also have that kind of um, experience and I'm going to share that later. Oh, okay. He says, one of my siblings had told my parents about um, my sweetie. And before he got a chance to talk to his parents, they had already heard about uh, his Filipina and his plans. He says, before he could even sit down on the couch, Chrissy, his father started in on a 25-minute rant and called... His fiance an Filipino. That's very painful, hurtful. I mean, that would be a horrible thing to have your father yeah. say. His father called him a failure in many different ways. It must have been really tough, and I feel for him. And I really want to thank him for sharing. We we've actually reached out to him and uh, discussed potentially doing an interview with him, which he was agreeable to, and I know he's agreeable to us sharing this. He, he wrote mm -hmm. this publicly on our comments page. He said his father called him a failure in 10 different ways. He says, I'm an architect and I've owned my own business for 20 years, and I had to hear that. My mom tried to restrain him, but to no avail, he writes. He says he was so disillusioned in a man he had idolized his whole life that he could say so many things, so many horrible things about a woman that he'd never met. Mm -hmm. He says his situation was different. His darling wife was going to come to the United States as opposed to, like us, we want to live here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. 
He said his kids were kind of spread out all over Canada, and none of them had met uh, his fiance before the wedding seven months uh, had had passed, and none of them had met his fiance. They all came to the wedding. Most of his kids and his family came to the wedding, and most were happy to actually, when they the time came to finally meet his Filipino. And he says the ones who weren't happy were polite. <laughs> Just showing politeness. Just showing politeness. He says, advance the calendar forward eight years. They've been together eight years since that time. And things are just great. It worked out. But it took a lot of work to get there, he says. I bet. Hmm. He says, within a year or two, my mom always told me, my wife, she was her favorite. And she meant it. Well, you know, maybe she got to know the Filipina that I think that's what he's saying, that it took a couple of years, but pretty soon his mom was won over. Yeah. 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 He said his dad became positive and friendly, but he never really knew what his dad thought. So I don't think that uh, bridge was ever fully repaired, but his father became um, agreeable. Mm -hmm. He says his kids have all come around and they recognize that... uh, his wife is a very positive influence in his life. He's kind of living his best life, and mm-hmm. they recognize that. He says it's unfortunate that he and his Filipino weren't able to have children, and he feels that would have been a way to kind of bond the families together. Yeah. Yeah. He says today his relationship with his three children is very strong, and two of the children feel stronger about his Filipino wife than their actual mother. He says, be prepared to stay the course. Our families and friends only know stereotypes. He says, if you have found a great companion, then family will probably come around and may come to love her as dearly as they do mine. He says he's really lucky to have met his wife, and he has a fantastic relationship with her family. I thought... It was extremely well written and heartfelt. Mm -hmm. And I contacted him and uh, he had written uh, several other comments and they just struck me as, boy, our viewers would love to hear these types of comments. Many probably have read them, but I wanted to bring them to the general Mm -hmm. audience. And he, uh, we exchanged an email and he told me that his wife, the one he speaks about here, was not the first Filipina that he met, that he flew to the Philippines to meet a different Filipina. Maybe it takes three Filipinas before you meet the right one. Yeah. So now, you said you had a story. Oh, yeah, about um, about uh, the reaction of the family towards him marrying a Filipina, especially mm-hmm. when the Filipina is um, younger than him. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's a lot of uh, people out there that telling me that I am just with you because of the money and... Um, um, Filipinos. Even at Filipinos. <laughs> you mean people who write in comments? Yes. Yeah, so so we get comments. some snarky comments. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about uh, gold digging. We talk about the fact that women all over the world are looking for security, but they want security with love. Yeah. And we have a big age gap, and we're out here publicly yeah. and opening ourselves up to criticism, and we receive some, and some of it stings. Yeah. So I really do understand if some other children, if your children will be against your relationship with the Filipina, especially when she's young, because that happened to me too, that my father had a relationship with a woman that is younger than me. So for me, it feel like not normal at first, but then when you get to know the person, you just, you will just have a very bad first impression to the person knowing that she had a relationship with your dad. Mm. But when you get to know her, you will like, just um, understand that this could happen really. And now that it happened to me, then it's just like, I really understand now. Do you think it's so much getting to know the woman or is it seeing your dad be happy and living a happy life and being living his best life maybe? Oh, well, that too, you know. So as you get to know the person, you also... Um, see how the relationship go on and then if it's a healthy relationship then you would be happy about it but if it's like not healthy relationship then you will like conclude that it's not really a ideal relationship Mm. so you have um before you met me your father um 
started a relationship with a woman who's younger than you. They've been together over so like eight years now. Yeah, I think eight years ago. Yeah. And uh, what advice do you have for um, men who are with Filipinas or thinking about meeting a younger woman and wondering how they integrate um, into the regular families? Um, I think they need to make an effort, make a way that his family and the wife will get to know each other. They will, like, um, have, you know, like, uh, if it's possible, you have to uh, interact with each other and then, you know, give them the chance mm. to know each other so that um, all those uh, negative thoughts that they had in their mind will be clarified if it's true or if it's not. Mm. Did it take you a little bit of time? Were you, did, would you have responded if your father pressed the issue or you think it helped to, that he gave you space? Well, uh, because of the distance also, we don't live together. So it took like a year before it, like, I accepted it like wholly. Yeah. But then I didn't have um, any anger or, you know, towards my father. I just tried to like understand his situation and um, yeah. We get a lot of people who write in and they uh, say, oh, uh, you know, Filipino would only be interested in you uh, because of your money. And that in Filipino society, the Filipinos don't date older men. Yet your father is dating a woman. Yeah, and 20, my father is not rich. 23 years. Some, <laughs> my, my father doesn't have any pension yeah, or any uh, money. So he's not wealthy. So he's not wealthy. So but it, there, it, it's kind of common. If there's a wealthy, divorced, 55, 60-year-old man, he might be dating a 25, 30-year-old Filipino. Is that common here? Yeah. Yeah. It is. So and uh, and, and uh, someone wrote in just today and said that uh, I mentioned on a video that you ordered the most expensive thing on the menu. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that you shared it with everybody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just to be clear, um, it cost a hundred pesos more than the double cheeseburger. So that comes to about ninety-seven cents extra. So yeah. I don't think it was a red flag for those out there that uh, thought that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, Chrissy is uh, working on this YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel makes money. And Chrissy is entitled to order a, a 97 cent <laughs> extra meal since she gave half of it away to the other people at the table. Just for clarification, let me get back and I want to share with you what um, our. Uh, the lesson that we can get from the story. Yeah, well, um, let me share with you the, uh, the story of his wife. Um, and how he came to meet her. He met online in February of 2015. So he met her online uh, after he had come to meet another Filipina, um, much younger Filipina, uh, that didn't quite work. And that, so he came, he met online, he came to the Philippines, he met this younger Filipina. It just didn't work. Mm -hmm. But he still had his online tools. And... Um, then he dated another Filipina he met online. So the first Filipina didn't work out. He was here, but he still had his online mm -hmm. tools. Then the second Filipina, it wasn't quite a match. He says there was something off about her also. Now the third Filipina, he's still here in the Philippines on this initial trip. He meets the third Filipina, and he says, we talked for hours every day. Similar to what happened with us. We just talked for so many hours yeah. every day. He says, uh, we met online in February of 2015. He says, I flew to meet her in March of 2015 at the tail end of a business trip he had to Malaysia. He says, although he swore he wouldn't ask her until the end of the week, I asked her to marry me on day two. <laughs> really? In Baguio and Pampanga. So they met her, is the third Filipina. He met her online. He traveled to see her. He spent, a, he had a week to spend with her. They were chatting a lot. Mm -hmm. He swore he wouldn't propose, but on day two, he asked, her to, he asked her to marry him. He says, I returned the following month for nine days, Puerto, Puerto Galera mm -hmm. and Pampanga. Then he filed for the K-1 visa. That was a process. And he had, a, and there was a glitch at the last minute. Uh, she arrived in early November 2015 with a quick trip two days later to Yosemite National Park in a snowstorm. Filipinas hate the snow. That's another story, he says. 
she and I pursued and received Master's of Arts degrees in education. He seems a little overeducated. He's already an architect. So they have been happily married. Um, he talks about uh, some of their pursuits. He mentions he's going to come visit the Philippines uh, soon and might want to meet us. Um, he is really an interesting guy, and I thought that our viewers would enjoy hearing from somebody. It's not always the first Filipino that works out. We have friends. We've met people here, and uh, quite a few of them are not currently married to the original Filipino. Mm -hmm. um, not 50%, but somewhere close to 50% possibly yeah. are with... You got an insect in your head. Oh, interesting. Bug. Mm. Buggy. I'm being bugged. Um, Here. Yeah, wow. Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, he says, uh, uh, well, so roughly, Chrissy, about half of the expats we've met since we've been here are not with the original Filipino. Yes, that, um, you know, at first that I was worried a little bit because <laughs> since I'm the first Filipino, yeah, you right. lived yeah. together. Well, in a way, you're my third because I mentioned I went online in 2000, mm -hmm. whatever, th six years ago, and I got scammed out of $100 and I said, forget this, this is all BS, I can't trust mm -hmm. anybody. And then the second time I met somebody, she turned out to be engaged. I chatted with her for two months. I'm like, what's up with that? I said, forget it. I was just, I guess, determined to try again. The yeah. third time was the charm. You're the first one that I've come to the Philippines. And, and uh, you know, and like I said, my policy was until you live with somebody for a year, you know, you don't really know what you're dealing with. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's been 10 months. You still got two months to go. So <laughs> fingers crossed. But, uh, you know, you run into stressors, you know, triggers, things that might trigger a person, things that stress a person yeah. out. You run into problems. You get to know their family. You get to know them. I think, you know, uh, 10 months is enough. And, uh, you know, a year is the, the, a really good way to go. You don't want to rush into it and mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure you make a good decision you want to um, bring somebody back to meet your yeah. family that you really know um, and we tell everybody that patience right yeah so it, uh, you know as what I mentioned before in our previous video that you will really know a person especially when you get through into ups and downs already in your life because if it's just all um, happy time she might or he might hide something in his um, attitude or character that is negative because yeah. it's a good time. But when it's a bad time, that is the time that yeah. he could like show. Right. Like you, you got uh, we were working so hard on YouTube. You came down with mononucleosis, yeah. like, uh, you know, the second month we knew each other. <laughs> and you were down for five days. I, to be honest with you, I had it in college. It took me like three weeks to raise my head off the pillow. You recovered pretty quick, but, you know, that was a real uh, trial by fire. Uh -huh. uh, we've moved uh, three times uh, since we've been here. The first two properties were extremely stressful. We didn't like them, and uh, we really we lost our deposit at the last place. That yeah. was stressful. Um, we've uh, launched this YouTube channel, which has uh, been... Uh, you know, uh, a real challenge. Uh, yep. We're so happy. And, you know, one of the things we want to do today is we want to thank everybody. There's like 9,990 of you roughly right at this moment. And we're just ecstatic that people are interested. People find value. We want to talk to each of you watching that we read all of your comments. A hundred percent of your comments are read. I think I respond to 100% of the comments. Every now and then um, I respond with a period, which is to let you know that you've made your point, but I don't want to delete your comment. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes people use foul language. I have to delete the comment and ban the person from the site. I mean, like once in a thousand times. Mm -hmm. But I usually write you back. Um, sometimes if you write two or three consecutive emails, I'll, I'll uh, send a heart. But 100% of your comments at this point in time, we are responding to. Uh, sometimes Chrissy and I, more than often, will talk about the comments. We take your comments to heart. If you have suggestions... Let us hear from you. Tell us what you think we should do. Uh, we heard from one gentleman last week. He says, you know, I'm not planning on moving to the Philippines. I like it here in the USA. I just like watching you guys live your life in the Philippines. Make more of those videos. 
Other people, they really like our 90-day plan, our 30-day exploration plan, our one-year guide. They like the instructional how-to videos. Like they want to be prepared for when they get here. And I've been doing some consulting. I do personalized consultation. It's taking up about six to ten hours a week. I had two a day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the most common thing I hear is people want to know how to meet really educated Filipinos. Mm -hmm. They want to know where to meet Filipinos when they get here on the ground. Um, Maybe they want to know where to travel here uh, in the Philippines. So what do you think we should ask of our our subscribers? Well, um, just uh, comment down below what you want to, what you are interested to know for the next video. And, um, you know. We will be challenged if you will um, write down the things that you wanted us to do. Ideas for videos. And if you are interested in private consultation, just email us at flymetothephilippines.com. And we'll help you with your love life. We'll help you with your travel. Or if you need business consulting, I can do that for you, too. I wanted to mention... I used to power watch YouTube back in America after I retired. I didn't know what Mm -hmm. to do with myself. The first two years, I never subscribed to one channel. I probably watched, you know, 20 hours a week of YouTube. I never subscribed to one channel. And finally, I started to subscribe. I don't know why. I thought, like, I don't want to, you know, someone was going to advertise to me or something. And I pay for YouTube Red. So, but now, um, you know, uh, I'm really, I don't like anybody to use my primary YouTube logon because the uh, algorithm knows me so well. And it knows, and I've got about 70 channels I subscribe to. And I love the power of the subscription. It just allows the algorithm to bring me the content that I'm most interested. You'll get our content even if you don't subscribe. the, The algorithm knows that you watch it and they'll bring you our episodes but if people uh you know are thinking of subscribing and they're worried that's how i was two years not one channel so we're at nine thousand nine hundred and ninety and you could be our ten thousand subscriber chrissy what can you say to them you, will you dance for them uh, chrissy <laughs> chrissy is about now next before you do subscribe chrissy will dance for you every morning chrissy does Zumba after we walk. Mm-hmm. For, we walk yeah, for yeah. 45 minutes to an hour and then Chrissy does Zumba. And yeah. as we say adios and farewell, Chrissy's going to dance some Zumba for you. <laughs> Till next time from Fly so Me to the Philippines. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for viewing. It's been eight months and we've enjoyed this journey. We're so passionate. Chrissy? See you in our next video.